I'm gonna keep an eye on the uh class to see if anyone comes. Uh, but yeah, hi Aliyah. So first thing, now that we're in the morning, I would like uh for each one of us to before we start, you know, get your water, make sure you're in a comfortable place. But I would like us to just close our eyes and then one by one. Uh, say an area or a part of our body that kind of feels a little bit stuck slash a part, an area that we would like to focus. So if you don't have any pain or if you don't feel stuck, just um, close your eyes and think of the part of the body that you would like to work. So I can go first, then Vivek, and then... Aliyah, and uh, I would say that the part of my body that I would like to focus today, just in general, or maybe even the whole week, is my time and its flexibility. Vivek? I was also going to say the spine. I'll be more specific that I also... While I really would like more flexibility and strength in the spine, I'd like to learn more about some the cervical spine, the cervical. Mm. Spine. Yes. Aliyah? Um, mine uh, are the sinuses. Your sinuses. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you know, it's all very much connected. Um, and if it isn't, then we make those connections, right? So we are sinus spinal. We're going to do a little sinus spinal. But first we need to wake up. I'm sure that we still need to like shake off a little bit to sleep. So we're going to start just by, you know, since we don't want to be with our closed eyes, we're just going to start kind of initiating the movement from our navel. And do you remember our navel radiation? So we're going to kind of try to exaggerate our breath so that our lower, but our pelvis is kind of rolling on our sit bone. So stomach in. You can go a little bit back. Curl up. Contract your back and then in breath, feeling of the thoracic spine. So we're going to do this a little bit. And this way, we're just giving a little bit of mobility. Let your spine kind of curve when you go back and go to the head. And then when you go, you radiate from the navel to the tip of your head. May the breath make the breath long and proud and loud. Last time, and we're gonna just try to do some little upper body circle to just wake up the cervix and we go towards one side. And then fourth arm to one side, and now we're gonna go towards the other side. Keep standing your sit bones as anchors to the floor. And keep expanding. And we can talk about, you know, freedom within the boundary. So your whole upper body has the freedom to do whatever it wants. Granted that your lower body is grounded. So it kind of raises the morning. Isn't freedom actually just limitation? So let's just shake that off a little bit. Let's give a little Copacabana feel. So raka ka ka ka, arms up arms up and you keep shaking it's Bollywood it's Brazil 
It's something. And now we're going to put our palms facing down. And now we're going to make circles out. And now as you try to make the circles as little as possible, as even if your arms or brushes, but you try to make them faster. And now the other way around, make them as little circles as you can, as little as you can. Yeah. There's still circles there as little as you can. And grab your arms and give yourself, you really try here. Let me show you from the back. You really try to grab this little muscles that are right next to the spine and just crawl. And now, as we are here, we're gonna bring our arms. We can still have one leg in front. So bring our arms front and try to bring your forehead as close to the floor as you can while still keeping that floor sensation. While still keeping your sit bones on the floor. Let's go up. And now let's just try to look at the back and create resistance. And what we're doing is that we're creating a very small torsion. You can even, for example, you can use your right hand for, on your left. Give it an extra pull. Something on the other side. And think of your spine as a wet towel. And whenever you do the torsion, it's almost that you're, you know, making a torsion and releasing water. Like imagine that every time that you make a torsion, water is falling. And see if that somatic image helps you to not only go a little bit more, but also let go of things. So when we do something like this, we're extending it upwards and creating space. But when we are doing this, we are actually allowing for the slide to happen. So let's come to the middle. And we're gonna bring our legs front like this and copper pose. Let's do it a couple of times using the hands on the floor here to raise so that the sides of your waist are going upwards, creating space and come back. And one more time, staff pose using her hands still. It's the morning, so you no, know, I can even, when I'm doing this, I can even put some of my weight in my hands, you know, because this is a really strong activation as long as I keep my feet uh, flexed. That's very important. So next time that you come to Calvert's pose, we're going to put the right knee over the left knee right hand on the left knee and we're going to do a mermaid pose so what we were doing we're going to try to look even more don't force a crick but it might happen and now really use the resistance of the space to come back as even if you were doing it on slow motion and now staff pose and copper pose. And now the other side to mermaid on the other side and look and see how it really opens and grounds without losing that connection to the floor. So now we're gonna go back to copper pose. Staff pose. And we're going to, from here, activate our core in a half boat. So you just roll a little bit back and you keep your feet. It's, it's, 
harder for men's hips to do this than for women for obvious reasons, but really try to engage your abdominal, trying to engage everything and keep here. And maybe you can try to extend your legs and come back to cowers pose. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to place the right shin in front and we're going to open towards the left side. And just gaze under your armpits. And now come back to the other side. And now come back here and twist and bow. And back up, twist to the other side and bow. Very good. We're going to do <clears throat> one more time. Staff pose with the hands here. Copper's pose. See if you can find certain cadence. Staff pose. Copper's pose. From copper's pose, gently we're going to open to a wide side position, and we're gonna just, you know, kind of first see how we can keep our feet flexed, which is very important to activate the back of the leg. So we're here and we're gonna kind of try to reach in front, reach, reach, and stand your hands, put your hands on the front, and realize that if you do this every day, you will, Come closer and closer to the floor. So we're going to open towards the side here. You can cling on your arm. And now for the ultimate torsion rinse of your spine, we're going to turn towards. If you cannot hold your feet, you can hold your shin. You're going to twist and bow and really feel that stretch on your left side. Go to the front. Come as close as you can and open on the other side. You can see I'm not, you know, because it's early, I'm not going to my full range of motion to my widest. I'm really just staying comfortably that even though there's a little bit of a challenge, especially when I twist, it's the morning, y'all. It's supposed to be nice and relaxing. And if you hurt yourself in the morning, then you're going to stay there the whole day. And now come back. And from here, we're going to find our hands and we're going to go to downward facing dog all at once. If you can go there. And now we're going to, let me just turn to the side so you can see better. We are going to pedal a little bit. Don't be so, what is more important is not strength when it comes to flexibility, but intention and direction. So before I like force my legs to be straight, I'm saying, you know, sit bones up, sit bones up, sit bones up. And you kind of let intention fall into matter. So now we're gonna, this is kind of a, kind of improvised, downward dog latin dances so just close your eyes and using your hips imagine that you're latin dancing maybe you're doing a little salsa or a tango just play a little bit it doesn't really have a shape but also just be holding but this way we're really waking up our whole body and doing a little cha 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 and now come back, look in front, and walk up. We're going to keep this forward bend. And we're still keeping the knees bent. But now what we're going to do is that we're going to, there's a little hop or a little, what you call this, kind of 
springing. Yeah, we're just springing. So place your hands and it starts. See how it changes when it goes from springing with your butt or going down to your feet. So it's a different kind of activation. Just split a little bit. Keep your knees. Keep shaking. And now, sit in your knees and step by step, come back up, keep your knees bent, vertebra by vertebra, go up. Really take your time. Really take your time here to come up, 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 up. And now, bringing the shoulders towards our ears and uh, so a little bit first start dancing a little bit so my hands my shoulders are connected to my ears and then it comes down and I pull down so it feels a little bit like you know Chinese grannies doing tai chi in the park so we're three Chinese grannies pulling down. So imagine that the air, I've used this many times. I think you even mentioned it, Vivek, but the air is made of honey. So as you come down, you're pulling, pushing the honey down, not only with your arms, but also with your heels. So there's this resistance. Play with it. See how that creates tension. And tension creates heat. And even if you do it very big and, or very small, what matters here is the control. So, yeah. Do it a couple more times. Really raise and go. And now last time. Uh, and now, it's very important, and this is something that you can do throughout the day, whenever you're feeling stuck or nervous or annoyed or something, you can always just do a little shaking of our pelvis. So if I would do it very slow, it's basically this, right? Which is... But I'm not, you know, like many times, like in certain dances, it's kind of like a sexual thing to thrust, but we're not, we're not busy with that. We're just creating this thing. So pelvis perineum, think of the perineum coming up and the sacrum pointing out. And it really starts here. And then everything else that happens in the body is kind of, a consequence but we're not really so you know my my pecs are a little bit moving but that's a consequence i'm not really my focus is not really on my pecs my focus is really on perineum sacrum perineum sacrum so do it a little bit more do it slow but then try to do it really fast and make this a loud breath so the louder you make your breath, the more kind of less tense it feels. So just play a little bit around. And now try to go side by side. So first little. So what are we doing here? We are isolating these movements, you know, so we can activate our interoception, our whole body. So right now, I, Antonio, exist in my pelvis. So. I'm not in my brain, I'm in my pelvis. I live here, my brain is here. And now we're gonna isolate and make another movement which is just this hip thing. And now to the other side. Yeah, still keeping it fresh, keeping it nice, keep, Sending the blood, keep breathing. And now let's go to the solar plexus. So 
It's going to do it on the side. To the front. To the back. Really try to isolate so the movement is starting on your solar plexus. Front. Like I'm exploring. You know, I am beaming a light and I'm retracting it. I'm beaming a light into the world. I'm hiding so that no one else can see me. I'm talking to people. I'm analyzing, reflecting. I need to be social. I want to go home. So just explore that and maybe try to, you know, without, I know it sounds a little bit, it's weird and you will move, you, you want to move your shoulders, but the movement is not starting from the shoulders. It's the solar plexus. So exercise in isolation. Yes, good. Chest out and chest in. Really think of like almost at here. So let's touch our solar plexus together. Let's really touch here, right? So you see, everyone has a little crevice um, or, you know, a little valley here. So just let yourself be pulled front and back. Pull front and back. Does that feel? different, right? So you might need to do it a little bit slower at the beginning so that you really feel the difference. So now let's do another movement that we can do is just going around. So the same thing that we were doing with the pelvis, my pelvis is immobile, and now my solar plexus is still, yeah, we're making little circles. Maybe it needs to be, at the beginning, it needs to be very slow you know, and very minimal, but it's always as much, it's good to think that the initiator, so this case is the solar plexus, right? Our ribs. Imagine that at the tip, there's a brush. So when you're making the circles, you're actually creating a little circle. You're painting that circle over and over. Yeah. Very good. So now, just let it go. We're going to do a little bit isolation with the head. The other side. And to finish, just bend your knees a little bit more. And we're going to do a little bit of torsions to finish our warm up. I like to do this, for example. This is again, this is spinal torsion. It's just spinal torsion and anything else that's happening. So your hips are pointing forward. You are initiating the movement in your spine. And then when you look at the back, consequence so you really twist your spine and you know i for example in the gym before i wait like i do lift weight i weight lift i always do this just because not only it concentrates but it also really rinses any bad emotions or stress from your spine so just rinsing the spine we're going to stay here for 10 breaths. The yawn comes, let it come, it's natural, it's infectious as well. 
I was like yawning normally and I can look that yawning. Really calm. The movement initiates in the spine and anything else that starts is just a coincidence. Last two breaths here. All right, let it go. So we're gonna just, before we go into our improvisation, I just wanna do a little exercise for the sinus. Um, but this exercise is a little bit cringe. <laughs> so don't be afraid. Uh, I think we've actually done it before in the first KB5 and it ended up being a laughter, but I suggest that you get some, um, if you're feeling stuffy, just get some, um, um, how do you so call this, uh, paper napkins, tissues, exactly. Um, and just first kind of <laughs> clean your nose a little bit, drink some water. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to use these two fingers, right? So let's say we start with our left nostril, right? Breathe in through the left nostril and then breathe out through the other nostril. Pause in the middle for a second and out. Suspension of everything and out. You can play with the suspension time. As deep as you can, and then you switch. Last time. All right. And now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is to do the fire breath. So do you remember the fire breath that we did? So we go, we fill up and then we create this pulsation from contracting our stomach and pushing the air out from our deep diaphragm. So we go, I'm just gonna show it once and I'm gonna do it. So you see, so I go, and then from deep of the stomach go. Yeah which then also ripples if again it's it's what happens with the body it's always the movement ripples always right so as i do this i create a movement in my shoulders but it i'm not being focused on that i'm not starting there it's just a consequence so we're going to do this 16 times and then you totally breathe out and then we breathe in again so 16 times and we do it three times okay so And let everything out. Be empty.
out. Place your hand in your lower diaphragm if you need. We're going to do the last time. And out. And I need to use that paper tissue again. If you have morning sickness, it might feel like your your insides are a little bit like Titanic and the iceberg right now. But trust me, you have the whole day to kind of give roots to this energy, and that's what we're doing. So we're doing the last one, which is the dragons, the Lion, sorry, the lion's breath. So we did dragon's breath and the lion's breath, which gave us a little bit of laughter last time because it involves your tongue. I don't know if you remember this one. So you go. And as you exhale, you do it as fast as you can and you do it with putting your tongue out and really opening your eyes as much as you can. So it goes like this. I think you remember this one because, yeah, exactly. And really like this, so the inspiration for this might be the goddess Kali, you know, with her tongue out. So you pull, as I'm pulling my tongue as low as I can, as I exhale and I gouge my eyes, I really try to almost like bit a fireball, you know? So do you remember Virtual Fighter? There was this, Dalsin, so let's do it one more time. Last time. All right. One more little uh, hack. I'm going to do this here closer so you can see it. Two hands. There's a space here. You touch your face, right? Like not here next to the nose, but here, this line, like literally where I have my wrinkles. <laughs> so you just go and you make the pressure, quite a strong one, when you breathe in. And you massage it upward. So see if that helps in any ways. And now we're going to try another one, which is right here next to your ears. As you pull up, you're going to pull down. Here. So not in your uh, temples, but here. You're going to. And pull it down. How does the sinus feel? Is it a bit better? Yay! Can we breathe? <laughs> we can breathe. All right. Amazing. So, grab a little bit of water. Now we're going to go to do a little bit of dancing. And, you know... What we're going to do is not a very different exercise. We've done this before. Do you remember the points in space, Vivek? Yeah, points in space. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. So the points in space is an exercise in which, you know, we touch points in space. So we can imagine it as like, you know, a quantum physics exercise in which, you know, we assume that, you know, this is all full of protons, electrons, and atoms, and we take our body to from place A to B. So with intention, touching points in space. You know, it can be a wall, but you know, it can just be this point here, or here, and here. And it's gonna be through our, you know, we've we've worked a lot now on isolating and separating the body. So use that awareness now and, you know, also use this awareness to kind of wake up your body 
and dance. So let's go. Let me play some nice music. And we're really just, we're just waking up our body before we speak, before we go on meetings, we are touching points in space. So we have around seven minutes to do so. Let me find this great dance. And as again, as you know, this part you can always turn off the camera if you want, or you can have a nice little dance together. Touching points in space. With different parts of your body. i 
Hi. Hi, Chevnam. I just managed. <laughs> no worries. Uh, we, you caught us in the middle of an improv. Super cool. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, let's just drink a little bit of water, go to the toilet, and then we can talk a little bit. And Chevnam, I can stay a little bit with you because um, Vivek and Aliyah have to go at, at um, by the hour, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Today. So we can just stay and we can practice a little bit, both of us, but in just a little two minute break to catch our mm -hmm. breath. Okay, perfect. Hi, Alia. Uh, Hi, everybody. <laughs> Finally, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've seen your name everywhere, but now I met you. Yes, yes, like the the last times. Uh, oh, actually, it is quite still quite a bit bumpy, but I want to integrate Colonel back <laughs> into uh, yeah into our explorations basically, and especially also the movement guild like. Uh, I was in the beginning and um, I'm super interested in, in this notion of embodied action or decision making mm. <laughs> and all this improv, how, how this fits together when we are coordinating. Hey, hey, how are you feeling? Good, today was good. Oh, yeah, it, it was much more like functional in a way uh, because you're just waking up, you know, so I try to make it as easy as possible um, with still having a possibility for using you know, dancing as a way of rearranging. So for example, if I feel like, <clears throat> I feel like my intention, for example, when I dance towards the end of the day is more like letting out things that I may have accumulated. Whereas right now it's more like, I'm thinking like I just woke up or it's like I'm still in the morning process. So dancing acts as the opposite, like as a mm -hmm. rearrangement of a way and I would yeah I would love to hear from you what how did you feel the difference from one to another cool. oh yeah do you want to go first mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah I mean I definitely felt it I woke up at 7 a.m this is started from eight eight to nine for me um, I know everyone's in different slightly different places you and Aliyah from nine to ten probably feel slightly different from that but like I'm hoping to try like a thoughtful morning practice. It's like a little bit longer for a while just to see how it feels. And um, it's been a while since I've done like one hour of movement before 9 a.m. So the approach was really um, gentle, but like uh, it found its... Straight. Not too gentle. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, always, always the problems that I experience with like very gentle practices in the morning is that I fall asleep. <laughs> like when I had, when I had Felden Christ, um, it was, I felt really bad because I, I hired the tutor, you know, to teach me because I had a lot of pain. And then this Austrian lady could only do it at 8.45. And, and like, Half of the sessions I fell asleep and I was always like, oh my God, no, I fell asleep again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> specific thing I would also add was, um, like, I really like the solar plexus work. Mm -hmm. And I have some, like, follow-up questions because I was trying to figure things out. But it was fun to try to figure things out there and with the hips. Both mm -hmm. of those like, just great areas to be thoughtful, like, yeah, let's to learn how to like, let them 
let them move, I think is really the. <laughs> yeah. To your, what, what were your questions regarding the movement or? When I started doing it during the improvisation, I felt like a lot of what I actually was able to accomplish was based on my core um, tightening or flexing. But something tells me that I don't know if that's exactly right or if it's like, but a lot of it felt like it was related to like core, like yeah. Tricks. So you know, like I, I call it a lot of times. I even use the expression the reading box. Remember, so there is when we when we talk about isolation, you know, it's you know the the movement that only uses like because we're not that you know like we don't have joints here, right? We have very little joints, so our movement is very um, limited. But it's sometimes by, you know, by really small things happening first and just being able to ground and effectively isolate that, that from the isolation, we can have a little bit more control. But it definitely, it definitely like, especially when we are doing this, you know, mm -hmm. it's more that's a matter of, yeah, that's more a matter of intention that I have like this brush that is, drawing this like infinite circle, but your, 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 uh, breathe, your whole breathing box is involved. Yeah. We yeah. are just invited to think about them separately. So also then when we go into an improvisation, we can realize that, you know, it's, it's anywhere that the movement can start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what about you, Aliyah? I always, Aliyah, you remind me of me when I was there. Cool. Because whenever I want, I finished something, I was like, ah, oh, please, nobody asked me anything. I'm feeling a lot of things. <laughs> Why do you think that's me? Because I look you look I look at you and I feel you like mindfully in your body. <laughs> um so for well, the funny thing is like I don't distinguish exercise first thing in the morning compared to anywhere else in the day. Actually, I think mm -hmm. I, I'm i most inclined to do uh, physical activity early in the morning. Our cortisol levels are the highest. Like you shouldn't drink caffeine for like two hours after you, more like an hour after you wake up, but you actually have the most natural energy, you know, assuming you got a good night's rest and you're eating well, I guess. But yeah. I, I it's, for me, it's the perfect time. Like I can, I can go run miles or, you know, I can do yoga or like what we just did. And I really enjoy that. And, um, I love in your classes when you just play some music and you give us some guidance, but really what I'm listening to is my body and the way that it, it charts its next path, like according to the way it feels as well as the music also being another guide. Um, it just like, it feels like I'm like speaking a language in a way uh, that for no one, but it's like my body expressing itself in another way um, to attune to like this heartbeat rhythm that I otherwise like would not be able to. I don't know. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think also like, I like very much what you say, because I think that um, dance from the outside perspective, a lot of times has to do with, competition you know and knowing what mm -hmm. to do and that's not things that I'm that it took me a long time to to uh, deconstruct you know and also rather than using this moment to like kind of think that we're doing good or bad we are doing this without any of those conceptions in order to create a cruelty free practice you know so cruelty in this case how we can be cruel with each other, with ourselves, you know? I know I can be very cruel with myself, like, because when I don't do things right, I'm like, God damn it, I'm telling you, what the fuck, you know? Like, and I used to have that a lot, you know? And that used to, like, I, I remember when I was in, in ballet class with the pirouette, I do have a lot of energy to like spin a lot of times. But what, what would happen is that as soon as I would feel like something would be wrong, I'd be like, fuck, 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 I'm not feeling it at all. You know, and like, I'm tense. And then, you know, you lose the balance. And it was only when, <laughs> when like the teacher was like, just like be quiet, 
you know, like be quiet, like not in the sense that like be quiet, but just be swift, you know, like have it happen. Don't have tension, know the points and, and things will happen. And right now, like, I don't really like, I like spinning. I like doing pirouettes, but I'm not any more attached to this, you know, perfect pirouette. So I can enjoy spinning around, you know, and be uh, kind of dizzy rather than, just thinking, fuck, I didn't do it right, you know? So <laughs> that's sort of, that's the space that we are trying to create here. So It's cool. beautiful. Thank you. I know you guys have to go, but uh, Chemnam, we, could, we yes. can stay like, <laughs> we can stay half an hour and we're going to do some exercises. Um, yeah, because I, prob I promise Chemnam. See you next week. Bye that bye. we wouldn't talk and we are talking a lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Hey, hey. Cool. Hey, cool. hey. Apologies. No. No my, my clock got uh, desynchronized when I switched from one uh, operating system to the other. <clears throat> oh, no worries. So we're oh. just actually going to do a little visualization exercise. We don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. But I would like to do it with you. I just need to get some pictures first. So just a second. Okay. Uh, download. They're here. So we're just, this is an exercise that I do very, a lot of times to just give us an aware of how much our, like how somatic works. So how mm -hmm. much does actually the, Where's how much does our image of how the body looks like actually then creates and shapes the way that we move? So mm -hmm. if you just give me a second, I'm here trying to aha, here we go. My two images and so I'm sharing. We're just gonna do a little yeah. Share my screen. Uh, basic. Okay. So, can you see this? Yes. yes. All right. So, let's look at the pelvis. So, we're going to start with the pelvis, right? Let's mm -hmm. just look at this image first together. Um, mm -hmm. So, this is the human skeleton, right? We see this everywhere. Yeah. We see them in spas or medical schools and stuff. So, mm -hmm. and it's quite right, you know, I've, I've had one <laughs> since I was in anatomy class, but there's something wrong about it. <laughs> Can you tell me where, where it's wrong? Um, but you spot, you gave me the answer last time. It's tilted. To, yes. To oh the my front, God, yes. Right. All right. There we go. Exactly. So in order for us to see the skeleton, we've created this image and this is if you go to any anatomy book, this is how you see the pelvis. But yeah. this, hold on. this is how the pelvis is. So we are not tilted forward, yeah. but we have a sort of a bowl here, right? Yeah. Our, <clears throat> our, is, our iliac crests, they are not pointing this, but they are actually involving. So, with just that idea, we're going to stand up. Let me just stop sharing. Mm -hmm. And I want you to look at that image. Mm -hmm. And I want you to allow your pelvis to be a bowl. So we're going to breathe a little bit. And we're just going to notice when you walk. See if your the end of your spine so your sacrum, it could almost say that it's in perpetual verticality with the earth. So move as little as you can. And maybe, you know, it really helps you to put your hands here on your pubic, in the mm -hmm. pubic bone, but also in your sacrum. Mm -hmm. And just see as when you walk, you know, maybe it's because of the shoes or maybe it's because we are, you know, we want to come into a room with confidence. Yeah. We, te we tend to lead with the solar plexus. So, you know, 
hey everyone, what's up? I'm, you know, I'm a VC firm. I know all of this, blah, blah, blah. but try to walk confidently from your hips falling down. And just, it's a very intimate process, but it's just about, you know, that idea of interoception. Let's mm -hmm. think that our bodies, that our psyche is all in our pelvis. So by putting it in the right place and not forcing it or tilting it by untilting the pelvis, and this is something that you have to, you know, habits are very, very, very strong. I'm a creature of habits. So if I tilted my pelvis for all of my life, which I did, which that's why, you know, many ballet people have this. So yeah. I literally have to remind myself every little step, pelvis down, you know, perpetual verticality. And it's much more I... much more balanced in between when I'm only on one foot. Yeah, more... exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I now invite you. Let's see how long we have. We have a little bit more time. So just I'm going to play some music mm -hmm. and it's going to be slow and the real challenge is to be with your pelvis. So the rules of this um, of this guild is that whenever we're doing these explorations, you can always have your camera off mm -hmm. if that somehow helps you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to keep my camera on mm -hmm. most of the times just for showing, but it's really an internal process. So it's not about doing the same as I do most of the times, but it's really about that. So... Imagine also like when you let it, when you let it rest, when you let it sink towards the earth, yeah. that there's also all this space that is not tense, you know? So mm -hmm. as I play, we're going to explore. Share the screen again. And just be with yourself. Be with your hips and explore. And the idea is really that it kind of your your self and your set proprioception moves towards your hips. We call mm -hmm. this Elvis the pelvis. <laughs> so we were <laughs> dancing with our Elvis. All right. <laughs>
There's something about it that almost, maybe it's because, you know, there's many words for it. Like the yo in yoga, we call it the first chakra, you know, mm -hmm. that, that is really, that it comes from this activation of this, of the space in the bowl. Yeah. And just try now that like one thing that I love to do is like when you're spending a lot of time in it, just go down with your pelvis. See how easy that feels. And come up with your pelvis, not with your head. Okay, wait a sec. <laughs> let me try yeah. that. Just let it fall. How does that feel? Yeah. And now if we look at it, like we have this image of a bowl, right? But what if we are actually, what if it's this? I don't know if you've seen this. What if oh, this wow. is our pelvis? <laughs> you know? So if what if our pelvis is a house that is always combating, you know, being destroyed? Mm. What if these roots are like... Yeah. So that is what somatic is all about, you know? Yeah. Uh, all right. So another exercise that we're going to do uh, before we finish is that we're going to try to, I like to call it the right and left hemisphere. So let's pick up a movement phrase that you know by heart. Is there any dance that you know or a movement like, I don't know, The Macarena. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you remember the Macarena? I think so, right? It's so okay. one, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Da -ga -da -ga -da. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's our left brain, our left brain hemisphere is the analytical one, right? Mm -hmm. The one that tells me right hand at a peck level, you know, left hand and one and one. So let's just dance it with our left hemisphere and try to be as precise, you know, in that voice, like, so where do you put it? And how many times you do it, you know, we continue. And, you know, through the left hemisphere, we go right, left, right, left, yeah, yeah, yeah. And back, and it's telling me, maybe I'm tired, but it's telling me that I have to do better at every time. We keep on doing it. And we're trying to be making it as exact as possible with our left hemisphere. So by now, the third time, we really know where everything needs to go. I should practice. Perfect. Ooh, you make a mistake, but you remember, you see where the mistake was, and you do it one more time, and you don't stop. Mm -hmm. But now, what if we're just here? So the right hemisphere. So look at time and space. And look at your body. And you're not so busy with tape, but you're busy with being <laughs> in space. Okay. <laughs> just try it. So now you're not busy with thinking of where your arm goes. Or if it's on the right time, but I'm making mistakes. It's okay. So it's the, <laughs> you know, there's a very interesting uh, theory that I just read about connections of the right and left hemisphere. And for example, with Arabic, because the language yeah. requires it's so metaphorical, you know, and uh -huh. every language and every word has the same root, but then with the ending. The brain activity of a mono, mono, like someone that can only speak Arabic, their brain yeah. activity is left, right, left, right, left, right, All left, time. right. <laughs> and, and in German, and then they compare it with Germans <laughs> because German is very much about like order and consistency yeah. and stuff. And they saw an immense activity on the left side. So it is really the way that we think, basically, the way that we speak basically influences our connection and it's the same thing that I have when I'm thinking like I'm trying to do this dance as well as I can so I don't make mistakes but 
the other thing is when I do it and I'm trying to be here and I, you know, I'm on my right brain, I'm trying to see, you know, what is around me and feel the air on my skin, you know, and also smell. Maybe I'm smelling like sweat and maybe it just doesn't look so right. But yeah. then when my left side comes, I'm like, oh no, a quarter. <laughs> And right. order. And all but then all of a sudden notice how you know my body is more tense because I'm trying to control it more. Yeah. You know? And I all of a sudden, whereas when I'm just trying to be here, it's more like I'm just trying to be here. <laughs> I'm just trying to be one with the consciousness of space and none of them is one is not better than the other mm. but it does feel liberating to be able to jump from one to another do you know what that's i mean that's right yeah <laughs> you have the spectrum exactly exactly so from where does your intention start so this is a question that can be abstract, like the brain, or very precise, like my movement starts from my pelvis. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And then sometimes when you let, you know, the breath, you let it take the wheel, it can even take you to places that are kind of, that you wouldn't be. So what I invite you to do yeah. today is that you think on when you are doing something be it talking with someone writing something thinking about something what are the differences between doing it from a place of order exactitude understanding precision or from a place of awareness and being and it can be from everything, from like washing your teeth to, you know, devising a math. I mean, well, I think mathematical problems you do need your left, <laughs> <laughs> your left brain a lot. You can also be inspired. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, yeah. How do you feel? Good. Good that I finally made it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, it's it's cool.